Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Tirso and I'm a creative director based in New York City. I started doing photo shoots maybe seven or eight years ago when I was an art director. I was so nervous when I first started because it looks like there was so much that went into it because there is a lot that goes into it. But when I looked it up online, there was not much that I found. With that said, I do want the information to live somewhere. My agenda on this channel is that I've struggled so that you don't have to. I'm going to cover the ins and outs of producing a photo shoot from start to finish. There's so much to cover for this, so I'm gonna do it in four parts. In this video, we're gonna start from the very beginning. As a bonus, there's a link in the description below with a full checklist of everything I'm gonna cover in this video. As I create the content for the rest of the videos, I'll update the link accordingly. There's always multiple ways to do things, and I'm sure a lot of you have your own processes on how to produce a photo shoot, but this is how I do it in magazine publishing. Everything starts with a brief because we have to understand what we're shooting. The example I'm using here is a campaign that I did for Mila Kitchens. They are German, so it's pronounced Mila, like... Sheila? Not Miele, which is Italian for honey. The brief was that we had to incorporate a Mila oven into an advertorial, which in magazine publishing, an advertorial is a piece of branded content that has an editorial look and feel. There's obviously more to the brief than that, but we have minutes, not decades, so that's all you need to know for now. We wanted to highlight a chef and one of the recipes. The recipe would highlight the use of the oven and it would also run in food and wine. So where do we start? First, let's start with what we know and what our limitations are. What we know is that we have a model or talent shot, in this case, a chef, but not just any shot, it's specifically a portrait. There will also be a food shot. We'll have to decide if it's going to be a large serving tray or a single plated meal. We'll also need to incorporate the oven. There could possibly be a prep shot where you just show the ingredients, which I always love. One note on that real quick is that most art directors will have what I call a signature in their work. There's some things that we always do and then there's some things that we never do. When it comes to food photos, there's two things that I love. The first is an overhead shot of food and vessels, which you'll find a lot of in my portfolio. When dealing with a lot of ingredients, I find that the containers give structure to the photograph and then I essentially just treat the photo like a layout. For glass jars and bowls, I think the shadows and refractions are so beautiful from above. The second thing that I love is giving the essence of a person without showing one. For this photograph, we left the water running as if someone is about to enjoy the bath. And here we made sure to pull out the chair as if someone were about to sit down. We also left the door open as if someone was looking into the room. So the idea of adding a prep shot allows an opportunity to show a moment in the process which places a person in the space. One limitation that we have is that the shoot has to be at the Mila showroom. Although it's a limitation, it is a whole nother level of stress to find a location on your own. So sometimes it's just nice that the location is already set and done. The next step would be to go to the showroom and scout some photos. When you're scouting a location, you really have to imagine what you're going to shoot. My priority for the shoot was the shot of the chef, so where is the portrait going to be and can we incorporate the oven into that angle? Let's take a look at some of the shots from my scout. My first impression is that it looks like a showroom. Since this was running in food and wine, the readers are probably not cooking in a showroom, so we need to push the idea of a home kitchen as much as possible, which is where props would come in. This is the main kitchen area in the showroom where the shoot will take place. Here's the other side, and then the center. I really love this angle and I think it could be striking as a hero, but there is one issue, there's no oven. So on the right side, we can treat the portrait straight on with the oven behind it. Double confirm everything, one of these shoots I shot for three hours and we were using the wrong oven. An angle is possible here, but I don't want the fridge on the shot, so it's something we have to watch out for. We also have a similar shot, but on the left side. And from this angle, I can have the chef leaning on or standing next to the oven. I like the light coming in from the windows. It might be an issue that you can't really see the oven that well, but it is represented. To give the oven its own moment, we can grab a detail and hero shot of it later. 
I took this shot here for the surfaces where I would be shooting the food. The table on the back is a dark wood and the black countertop is sleek but reflective. Let's take a look at all the photos again. Before you leave your scout, make sure you have an idea of different options for the shots that you require for your shoot. In this case, if I don't shoot the chef on the left side, perhaps that's where I would plan to do the food shot. Or if I shoot the chef at an angle, perhaps the oven shot is straight on. The more work you do during your scout, the less guessing you'll have to do on the day of the shoot. I always start with the photographer. I look at online portfolios. I also reach out to photo agencies that represent photographers and stylists. You don't have to use a photo agency. You can certainly reach out to independent photographers. They'll probably come in quite cheaper since they don't have the agency fee. If you are going through an agency, here's some of the agencies that I like to work with. Elise Connolly, Sarah Laird, Judy Casey, Pat Bates, Kramer and Kramer, and EH Management. For the photographer, I need someone that can shoot both a portrait and food. I'm saying portrait because it's not a fashion shoot where the model is constantly moving. It's a portrait of a chef in a kitchen space. The showroom is so reflective, so we need someone that can balance out that reflection. A photographer that doesn't know how to handle reflections will just make the shoot more difficult, and that is not why you're hiring them. When you've decided on a photographer, you can then reach out and ask for their availability. I would also include your budget here. If it's your first time reaching out to a new photographer, instead of including your budget, I would ask what the rate is. There's two reasons why you should do this. The first is, let's say your budget is $8,000 and a photographer's rate is $5,000. If you present the full budget up front, they will use the full budget. Conversely, if your budget is only $5,000 and the photographer's rate is $8,000, Unless they're willing to work for a lower rate, it may not be the right collaboration for a project. There might be some situations where the photographer is already booked for the day. You can still ask if there's any other availability that they have. You'll just have to confirm these with the client. For advertising shoots, the client is paying, so their time takes priority over your photographer. You may have to reach out to several photographers or agents until you find one that meets the project needs, has availability, and is in within budget. Now, there are times where you'll struggle, more than likely in the beginning, but once you've produced a few shoots, you'll then start to build a trusted list of talent that you can go to and you'll have more options. Once you've booked the photographer, you can now book your stylist. For this shoot, we're going to need a prop stylist and a food stylist. For the prop stylist, unless you have someone in mind, I usually just ask the photographer. It's not lazy, it's just easier. The reason why I do this is because the team on set needs to be able to work together seamlessly, so if they already have someone they're comfortable with, then all the better. Just like the photographer, there are requirements that we also need for the prop stylist. They need to be able to pull home decor because we want it to look less like a kitchen. Since we're shooting a plated shot of food, I'm also looking for tabletop in the portfolio. The prop stylist is responsible for all the props that come to a shoot, but when there's a location, they're really resourceful in using what's already available at the location. In this case, the Mila showroom already has plates and utensils that we can use. I would probably have the prop stylist bring in some chopping boards or napkins. Fabric is always great to soften a photograph and it also adds an element of texture. I would also have them bring in some plants and then also additional vessels to house specific ingredients. Perhaps for something like honey, it shouldn't go on a small plate or a cup, it should go in a proper honey jar. So look through some portfolios and see who you think would be a great fit for your project. You can follow the same thing as we did with the photographer and reach out about availability and budget. For the food stylist, I would normally say ask around or look at some online portfolios, but since we're shooting a chef, I usually ask them who they like to work with. They have a certain way they want their food to be portrayed, so oftentimes they'll already have a regular stylist who probably has already styled the recipe previously. Let's say you need to source a food stylist for your shoot. You wanna look at the nuances in their work. When I say nuance, I mean, is there a finesse to their work? Have they styled what you're shooting previously? Here's an image of chocolate frosting. Don't get me wrong, I would totally eat this cake, but when it comes to styling, it feels very flat to me. 
Here's another image of chocolate frosting. You can now see the dimension in the frosting. I can't imagine how long it took to style this, but the end result is an absolute chef's kiss. This was styled by Judy Hobart, who I've worked with previously. If you need a food stylist, she's amazing. I also want to shout out to the photographer, Joel Goldberg, because the lighting is incredible. Both of their links are in the description below. Same thing as the photographer and the prop stylist. Reach out to who you like and ask for their availability and their rate. All right, let's finally talk about budgets. Budgets suck. He knows it. Budgets vary for each project. Sometimes you could have 20,000 or you could have 120,000. Sometimes you'll even have 1,000. All are workable, but you'll have to be really resourceful for the smaller budgets. Most often a photographer or stylist will work for a day rate. I've never hired anyone that works for an hourly, but I would be careful because that can run up very quickly. One thing to note is not the full rate goes to the photographer or stylist. A photographer's rate includes the photographer, a photo assistant, a digitech, and perhaps an equipment rental. Prop stylist rate will include the prop stylist and an assistant. It will not include the props themselves, so you will have to be mindful of what your prop budget is. One other note for prop stylists is that you have to pay out prep days, which is when they actually pull the props. I would say the standard here is one prep day for every shoot day. So if you have a three day shoot, you'll pay out an additional three days for prep. There could be an additional day charge for prop stylists, which is a day for returns. If they're working, it's the same day rate. Again, this is industry standard. Something to keep in mind about the return day is that if your prop stylist rate is $1,200 a day and you're only returning $500 in props, it doesn't really make sense to include a return day. I usually just give away the props on set to the team as a courtesy. For food stylists, the rate includes a food stylist and an assistant. It does not include food, so you'll also need a separate budget for that. Food stylists also require prep days at least one day for each shoot. They don't need a return day because you can't return food. Let's price out a mock photo shoot that is three days. Keep in mind that the rates I'm using are just an average. Whomever you're hiring, it will fluctuate. And also don't be alarmed by the pricing. I'll go over after on how to reduce costs. A photographer, I'm going to say 8,000 a day for their team. 8,000 a day for three days is 24,000. Prop stylist, I would average them to be about 1,500 a day. It's a three-day shoot, so we'll have to pay out three prep days, and I'll also work in a return day, so that's actually seven days, which brings us to 10,500 for the stylist rate. We need a separate budget for props, so let's say 2,000. That might be a lot, but if you want plants, it's about $500 already or more, and then across three days, you'll just want options. Food stylists are roughly the same as prop stylists, so 1500 a day. They will also need three prep days, so that's six days, which is 9,000 for the food stylist. For food, I'm going to guess 1,000 a day. So for three days, let's say $3,000 for food. When it comes to food, the amount of food your food stylist has to purchase is significantly more than what you need. Let's say you need lemons. You don't want them to come to set with three lemons. You want them to come to set with 30 lemons. And you're gonna go there and look at all the lemons and choose maybe three of the most beautiful lemons that you want for your shoot. I was doing a shoot with produce that included a pumpkin. So the food stylist ordered a batch of pumpkins, maybe 15. There were only two or three that I liked from the batch. So risk what you want, but if those two or three weren't in the batch, I would have an ugly pumpkin that would not be turning into a horse and carriage anytime soon. The last line items for the shoot will be travel and catering. Breakfast and lunch should always be included. The team is local, so I'm just going to ballpark an additional $2,000. If your team is traveling, you'll need to accommodate the cost of their travel. Our grand total for the three-day shoot is $50,500. This actually isn't that bad. It's a comfortable estimate, and the crew on set will be able to execute anything that you need. So what can we do to reduce costs? And you should always try to reduce costs. The best way to do this is by using an all-in budget. I purposely used a three-day shoot because it's easier to work the numbers since you're guaranteeing them a longer project. This can be more difficult if your shoot is only one day. The only way to get around this is to ask for a favor. 
Full transparency that I have asked for favors before, but these are people that I've worked with for years. And additionally, I always make sure to find another project that pays a full day rate at a later time. The photographer, I would be comfortable taking the rate down 25% to $6,000 a day. So I would offer 18,000 all in. In my opinion, anything lower than that would be offensive, but let's be very clear that 6,000 a day is still an excellent rate and it's guaranteed work. For the stylist, I would maybe go down to 1,200 a day. The prop stylist at 1,200 for seven days would come out to 8,400, so just round up to 8,500. The food stylist at 1,200 a day for six days is 7,200, and I'd round up again to 7,500. For your food and prop budgets, you're going to have to compromise here and perhaps sacrifice a few things. If you're shooting on surfaces, maybe you only choose one to two versus three to four. If you can't use plants, maybe you use produce in jars. Obviously that's not the same thing, but it's also dependent on what your budget is at. You should absolutely communicate any of your budget restrictions to your stylist. They've worked with a range of budgets, so they'll know where they can cut costs. For props and food, let's say we're able to reduce by $500 each. There's not much you can do about travel and catering, but even still, we've already reduced the price of the shoot by $10,000. You made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to download the checklist in the link below. In part two, I'll cover starting and finalizing a pre-pro doc and setting up a pre-pro call. For those of you that are new to photo shoots, pre-pro means pre-production. And if you didn't know that, you should probably watch part two. We covered a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of questions, so drop them in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on parts two through four. See you next time.